today we will see especially the last other one. Obviously, it's impossible to see all of them, but many of the postmodern names, authors, um, way of thinking, um, ideas we will see today. And then, especially, uh, the repercussion, the influence that they had in the uh, subject of jurisprudence, especially in the critical legal theories. Then we will see also the feminist and critical race theory. And finally, uh, the African philosophy. Melissa, uh, please admit the people uh, that is in the waiting room because it's not, if not, I will stop the class every minute. Uh, okay, so at the end of this lecture, we will have an activity uh, in groups with African philosophy. Uh, and you would try to think about what could be the African philosophy, the uh, African jurisprudence. That is. But now we will begin with postmodern names. Postmodern names. I don't know how many things do you know about postmodern names, but probably. Probably uh, you, you well, probably you have some obscure ideas, <laughs> but something that so many paintings, so many parts of the art of postmodernism, for sure you will remember at least one. Some of you don't you know uh, which painting, which who is the author of these paintings? All postmodern art. No one of you. The right one. Yeah, it's the right Pollock. one. Pollock. Great. Yeah. The middle one is the American. Is the American painter. I'm forgetting his name. Andy Warhol. Uh, Andy Warhol. Yes. Yes. Andy Warhol. The left one, I don't know. <laughs> the left people used to 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 have a little confusion. One of them, they say that John Manuel Miró uh, uh, from Spain, but no, it's Kandinsky, it's Kandinsky, Kandinsky. And, uh, and it is, it is a uh, well, postmodern art. Is I don't know if you realize that the, well, the modern art is the, the, in the area, the modern area was so many details, more or less, the, 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 well, very well done. The, but now there's a lot of disorder. Every time it's a lot more of disorder. Every time uh, authors try to break the rules to show different things, no? Uh, well, um, we can see this one, for example. This one, uh, it, it is also uh, very interesting because you can find here a disorder, a lot of disorder. <laughs> yeah, there is some chaos. For sure, you will remember the the nomen, the chaos of Kantian. Well, more or less is the same. It, it is have no reason. You can see so many graffitis. There is no rule. It, 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 it painting follows no rule. No, it's all it's all things on, on disorder. Uh, the traditional concepts of beauty are uh, for uh, the author forget all the rules, no? And who puts just the thing that he thinks? I don't know. What do you think about this this painting? Well, if you enjoy that or not, well, you can say I think I can spend a little time here, no? So this is another a uh, very interesting <laughs> uh, art of postmodern art. Well, why it's very interesting this this part? Because you can see in a palace, in a Victorian decoration, you can find there all, all the 
the lines very well uh, done. Uh, but in the middle of that, well, something that is so strange that all people will say, no, this kind of art will never be here. And the authors trying to break the rules and it's probably the principal idea of this author. We have to tr break the rules and to, um, we have the right to be different uh, and to be, well, it's incredible, no? You, you put a, a thing that has nothing to do in that place, at least in the common rules of the decoration of things, no? Uh, well, this is uh, another piece of art. Let's see, this, well, few days ago, uh, I saw this La Fontaine in a museum, Tate Museum here in London. Uh, and you can say, wow, this could be a masterpiece of art. <laughs> I don't know if it could be a masterpiece, but in any case, it was in, it is in a museum here in London. Um, well, uh, well, I don't know if you enjoy so much seeing these kind of things. <laughs> it's incredible, no? It's incredible. <laughs> just, I think that some of them could be just for loss, for, for a smile a little. A little. <laughs> and this one, <laughs> this one, you can say, well, this one could be a masterpiece in a great museum. Well, nowadays anything can be <laughs> in a museum, yeah, in a, in a gallery, in a gallery of art. No? Uh, and you can say, well, how much art could be behind of that? No, probably it's just to break the rules because you have to break the, 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 the rules. And have any sense, have any sense this kind of art, these authors, what are they thinking about these kind of things? The rules, no, it's just breaking the rules because we have to break the rules, more or less. Uh, each one has have his own way. Each, there is not a traditional rules of the beauty and, and how to show, I don't know, a lake, a tree, a beard, or, no, there is no rules. You you have to change, and each one he has his own true, his own beauty, his own good. Yeah, there is no nothing that could be in, in all things. No, there is not true for all. There is not beauty. There is each one has his. It's a very relativistic culture, as you see. This is it. It is the 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 problem with 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 this no and in a very relativistic and individualistic culture there are so many problems for the for the philosophy for philosophy and for the law and for jurisprudence especially you know for the philosophy of law so what is postmodernism no uh, well, I found one infographic in, on internet. I think that it makes sense. Uh, I'm not, well, I think that some of the things I have to precise something, but well, it, more or less it give us some idea of what is the difference between modernism and postmodernism. Yeah. First, remember some author of a uh, modernist no uh, well, the modern area no? it ends with Kant more or less uh, and Kant is very organized uh, put, he used to put all the rules for all of it. his people say that he was always on time everywhere and the people used to adjust their clocks just watching when a uh, can't goes to home <laughs> because they realize that it's exactly at that time they used to to adjust their watches the the, the clocks so that is so different now that i am a meeting i'm meeting later people <laughs> well 
you are not can or, or some of you are not. Well, in any case, we can say what is the truth for the the some authors, many authors of modern era. Well, there is there is an universal truth, undeniable truth that we have to find that because are outside of us. This is the first the idea. But in postmodernism, remember, there, there were so many authors, Hume especially, very sceptical. Uh, well, um, after scepticism, we can find very, a very relativistic culture. No. Truth in postmodernism is a man made and can be changed for the individual. Everyone has his own, own truth, his way of thinking about the world. Well, I don't know if you agree with this new conception, with this new cosmovision of the world, no, of not one world. No. How many worlds could, could be with this uh, approach? Well, many, million, million. It depends uh, from uh, the perspective of each one. Well, second, second, about reality. About reality, we have a, two um, a distinctions here. First, reality is the set in the stone. It's set in the stone and the individual adapts. Yeah. A, in modern names, in modern names. So you have to adapt to the reality uh, and to, to uh, to be in the world in the way that you should be, yeah. But in postmodernism, it's quite different. Reality is what we perceive, is what we perceive it to be. What is real for you may not be for another. And a second distinction is this next one, no? Reality is a single layer in modernism, no? Is what we see in front of us. Yeah, remember the things that are outside. Kant is just the end of the modernity. Yeah, remember that's why uh, he, he uh, put the chaos and it's a little different, but it's the end of the modern. But, but the, usually in modern philosophy, uh, well, it's a single layer. You can discover the truth that are outside. Well, how. Well, there are many approaches, rationalism, the empirism, and so on. Uh, but in postmodern area, uh, well, reality exists, they say, in four layers. Yeah, uh, it depends obviously on, on what, how we feel, how will, uh, uh, how our, our emotions, well, that's why there, there is an example very, and the deeper one's goes, the less real it becomes. So, let's see another difference between modernity and postmodern era. In modernity, reason gives us an independence and admitting people. And in as independence from our oppressors. Yeah. Remember, no, in the in modernity there there was the industrial revolution. Um, well um, the field that you can manage the, the cosmos, the universe, and you are the king of the universe. No? But in, then the reason the reason is not helps anymore in postmodern area to the man, to the humankind. Reason is one of the ways the past keep us from progression. Yeah, is because it's, it's seen more or less like an instrument of oppression. You know? The antique ideas, the uh, very conservative uh, oppressors, more or less, is is that the new view, and, and, and it, it is interesting. No? Uh, well. It's a very negative approach, the postmodern area. 
no, reason never works, <laughs> uh, just for bad things. So that's why all the paintings that I show you uh, are well, it's a little obscure, some of them. Uh, a lot of chaos. There is no no rules. There is, is no sense at all. You no know? work. Yeah. And it is very interesting the, the narrative, the how they express the ideas. Well, we can see in in the modern authors that they used to make a linear argument, no? Overreaching narratives, stories follows a standard path. Yeah. Uh, linear. You say that the conclusion is that, then this, the conclusion could be that, and that. Uh, but in the postmodern area, it's quite different. The, the way of of explaining things. You know, it's like like a tale. You know, and you you say, well, I was living there, and I was feeling so bad, and and it's incredible for, because I have read so many papers in my life, and, and so many. Uh, books always I mean uh, of Jewish prudence um, the postmodern authors used to to tell you a story no? and you can find now in, in incredible journals very big good journals the Harvard human rights uh, journal <laughs> it's incredible a uh, paper wrote by, I remember, by one African explaining all his disgusts, the, the, the thing that he had suffered and, well, and this, you know, very negative and say it's not possible, you, you, you cannot understand me and it's like a story, you know, like a novel, but like a, a tale almost. <laughs> Almost incredible, no? In a paper, in a great journal, in a great journal, no? So the way the, the postmodern authors used to explain things, well, this is it's just that's just like a conversation. No? It's 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 interesting. Finally, what about the order? It's possible some order. Well, obviously, in modern area, yes, no, order must be a ruling force in society. But in postmodern area, well, uh, if there is an order, we have to destroy them. <laughs> order exists to be challenged. There is a subversion key. Uh, right. well, if you see well, that this, this is all perfect in this house, I will put a, 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 a lot of disorder as much as I can inside of that house with this statue or as you as you saw <laughs> yeah and with this i will i will show you now a different kind of art architecture architecture art of postmodernism because why why this because uh, you will realize some good things and others not so good things <laughs> about postmodernism and its approach. No? Well, what did you think about this house? Don't you know? Well, here is in Prague, Czech Republic, and it's called the Dancing House. The Dancing House. It, I enjoyed it very much. I, I was there. I was there a time ago. Uh, it's great. You say, well, at least it's different. It's different, no? It's called also Fred and Ginger. <laughs> you know, like, like two guys um, dancing, no? Um, what well, is the traditional conception, no? That houses can never dance, no? And the architects say, it, uh, well, let's try... Uh, it is a challenge. I will try to to make a dancing house. Huh? 
and that's why we go. I will change the rules and I will change the the traditional way of thinking and see what happened. See what happened. You know? And he did. Uh, he he made that house. I, I think that it's interesting, and especially it's very very beautiful. I think in, at night when you see all the lights and how they dance, <laughs> it's incredible, no? It's incredible, no? And as you see here in the uh, 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 the buildings that are behind of the dancing house, or are very linear, or very modern. Are very organized, and here no, here not at all. The 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 building of the, the right is almost falling, no, a little falling. It's not absolutely vertical, but looking linear. Ah, obviously, the other less, no, that with glasses. It's incredible, no. Uh, the dancing house. Let's see another, no. It is very famous, also, no, and it's it, it is it is postmodernist, no. This is it is an iconic, an iconic uh, house, the Rugo Center for Brain Health. No? Brain Health. <laughs> it is in Las Vegas, uh, United States, no. It's Brain Health. <laughs> it's incredible. And as you see here, as you see, here, you, you can discover many things here. No? First, obviously, there is no rule. No? If if the author, the architect, found uh, some rule, they decide to break that rule. No? The the rule. Uh, what, what was the rule? Well, all buildings have to be with lines, and, and there will be the usual the usual windows. It's in a box, kind of that, the glass in the box, um, very organized. And so he decided, well, there will be no lines. There will be no lines. Uh, every window can be in any place. Um, finally, we can put also walls with, without rooms, as you can see in the left. You know? There is a, <laughs> a falling wall without any room, without any sense, <laughs> without any sense. Uh, well, we can say, well, I really like that that house. I think that is great. Uh, I really enjoy it. But in any case, but in any case, uh, well, what we can see here, you know, that you have to expend so much money to break the rules, no? Probably the rules have some sense. Why well, yeah, houses used to be so organized? Because are cheaper, <laughs> are cheaper, no? If you want to do that, probably you have to expand $300 million or, or more, or more. Because all this house is made by titanium and titanium is very expensive. Very expensive. Probably sometimes you you can you can break the rule um, because th there is something interesting. No, in this case, I I think that there is a lot of things that make sense because if in architecture, if you create an iconic element in a city, you will attract so many tu tourists. So many tourists. Um, people used to go to Prague. To see the dancing house and to Las Vegas to see that house and it's attracting uh, tourism. This could be a good reason, yeah. And create iconic elements for a society, yeah. But but if you want to do all the houses of the city like that, probably it makes no sense, no? It makes no sense. Yeah. So it is. I think that seeing this house. We can realize uh, more or less the the advantage and the cons, the the, the disadvantage of the postmodernists. No, well, from time to time could be good to break the rule, but but it's impossible. Uh, all the city with this kind of of houses. Well, 
will be so funny and so expensive. Uh, nobody will have a house <laughs> because it's so expensive and nobody can buy these kind of things. You no, know? yes, a company, the state, or, or let's see another one. You no, know? this is Walt Disney World and the concert hall that is in Los Angeles, California, did by Frank Jerry, made by Frank Jerry. So I, I think that is very beautiful. This you can find here not not just cows. Uh, seems to be a little cows, but um, well well organized cows. <laughs> yeah, well organized, very well organized. Yeah, the lines never disappears at all. Well, it's just uh, another kind of, of showing the lines, but well. Um, well, and have more sense this kind of architecture. No? Uh, I don't know. What do you think about this or this one? Instead of that, this Mopop Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle. Instead of, of the last architecture, I don't really like <laughs> this one. <laughs> it is just, yeah, it's. Terrible. <laughs> it's just to break the rules because we have to break the rules because I will do well, if we will talk about pop culture, we have to, to break all the rules. And if the glasses are very linear, well, I will put the glasses whatever it falls. <laughs> it's, it's I have a terrible, question not? for you, uh, Professor. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. What my history teacher once once told me, yeah, in uh, in very okay, in the era of Stalin during Russia, people didn't like follow Stalin because you know they saw him every day or that he gave orders every day. But people followed him because of the massive amounts of structure he put in place. So he had towering statues of himself in almost every city. Like you were never far away from a figure of Stalin, and that's what my history teacher said. So you see, when you're in that situation every day. You have this towering figure, though you know it's not alive, but it's a, like a reincarnation of him, and that forces yeah. you to abide by his principles. So, what does this have for the effect of people who go by it every day, who see something chaotic? What do they think? They think, okay, so me myself, I can, I can. No, it, my, it, yeah, it is very economic. No, it, all these kind of things, all the art, yeah, transmit an idea. Yes. An idea. And people use, if the people will discover that idea, well, more or less, will be think more and more like that, no? Okay. Uh, and I think that, well, and, and it's better to be conscious of what, about what kind of idea they are trying to transmit. We'll, we'll talk a, a little more about this when, when we see the philosophy. Now oh, I'm nice. doing just an introduction of this, no? Okay, to explain the, the modernism. So, well, there is a chaos with no sense. You can find here, well, a little more sense because well, so things, things work better here. I don't know. It is a cinema center in Germany. But I don't, I think that is okay. Not, not, not so incredible. And this is in Spain. You can find also the city of culture of Galicia, no? What was the 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 rule? Well, the buildings that used to be uh, straight right right uh, going to the top of the the heaven as much as we can. And now, you know, uh, here and uh, here uh, is the, the the rule was break. How? Well, say, well, not to the top of the heaven, but uh, wherever it falls. <laughs> uh, it's in, in another way. And I think that well, it could make some sense also. Uh, and well, uh, I think that this, it, it, it is okay. It's not so very expensive uh, to do that, and a mix of this. And let the, let the last two uh, buildings, no, the, the the ones that you can see at the left was Vibra Fire Station. Yeah, 
it's not so good. Sahara Hadith have so many good things, but I don't like this one. Uh, so it's very simple. What the, what are you trying to to say there? Well, not so much. <laughs> no. And in and the in the design, it's a design. The last one of Coop in uh, for Guadalajara for Guadalajara. It's that I well, uh, it's just to show. As you see, probably could be a face inside of the glass. I don't know if you can discover the face there, no, or, or whatever you want. To. Trying to see, well, we are watching you. <laughs> I'll be watching you like the song, Sting, Sting. No? Uh, it's incredible. So uh, it's it's good. I think that you can find good things, not so good things in postmodern art. But how how this kind of, of thinking? Uh, was developed in the past. It's very inter interesting to try to realize more or less how the the artists got these kind of ideas because the the artists are just a wave consequence. Probably uh, first are the ideas, the big thinkers. Then, well, in, in so many sciences uh, like jurisprudence, ecology, morality, uh, developed uh, a little, this, uh, were, were de developed uh, these ideas, and finally in art you can represent uh, these ideas in the way that I showed to you. So now we will see uh, the critical legal theory, how these ideas uh, grew, um, were developed uh, in the history of the thinking. So we'll begin with this author. We'll, today we will not see so many authors, but we will think um, deeply in their ideas. No? This is Ferdinand de Saussure. Ferdinand is well it's not a, obviously a, a jurist man instead of that he developed and was very famous very famous because he developed what was one of the founders of semiotics and semiology and also he developed so much uh, the li new linguistic approach to that science no uh, it, it's it's very, very clever man. I think that uh, he had a lot of incredible intuitions. No, so the first idea that he had is that we can find in the language a kind of two layers structure. Yeah, there is a, a structure, uh, a structure first, the visible and invisible. Huh? But the, the deepest structure is the most important. Uh, the deepest structure is an invisible layer, an abstract layer uh, that it, he called blank. blank. So um, on the other hand, you have the parole, uh, parole, uh, well, parole. The actual speech that we hear in the real life, and, and, and the, the, the he said, well, probably you will notice you have known that you can uh, put one word, uh, for example, your dog, no, your dog, uh, but then you can call the dog a. Uh, in some other way, <laughs> for example, my poopy <laughs> or, or my pet, or the name of the, of I will put the, uh, to that dog a name, no, a lion, lion, <laughs> no? 
because I think that my pet must be very powerful and I will uh, name uh, my, my pet, my dog, Lion. Uh, so, it is, uh, he said, well, in any case, you, you are using so many words to refer to the same thing, to the same concept. Um, well, and that's why we have to take care of not so much uh, of the of the words, of the parole, but especially, especially, we have to be focused in the land, in the deepest structure of the language. And with this idea, well, he developed so many things, and so many authors used to follow this this approach. And there is a the, in the language there is a, a thing that we can see. There is a another thing, the most important one, a structure behind that things that we cannot see. Yeah, um, this structure was adopted by Claude Levi Strauss for explaining so many things. No? In anthropology, uh, he used this two child model to determine the reality of myths, of myth. They say, well, when there are so many stories in every culture, uh, well, uh, many myths, no? So, but in, in, there is a true behind that, or there is a, a thing that they want to explain, no? More or less, always, uh, so many authors, Freud used these two layers, more or less, and, and we will see in jurisprudence which kind of authors follow Sassur in, in this approach. So, language has neither ideas nor terms that existed before the linguistic system. It is a great idea. I don't know if you realize how deep it could be. Language had neither ideas nor sounds that existed before the linguistic system. So, I don't know if, if you can distinguish the, the language of the, any animal, like a bird, you no? Know, it says pee, 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 or pee, or pee, or like that. <laughs> And always the same song to 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 communicate with another bird. And elephants have another kind of sound. Many of them we cannot hear. Just the some other elephant can hear kilometers and very 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 far. They can hear each other. It's incredible the language of the elephant. But always the same sound. No? But it's so different in the human language because in, in our language, we have not a necessary language. We can put to any song, any concept. We can mix in, 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 in any way, in any way. That's why uh, there is not word absolutely linked with one, with one uh, idea. Perhaps, I don't know, there could be one screaming, no? If one is uh, screaming because he has a lot of pain, probably it is linked, natural linked this sound with, with, with this idea of pain. Uh, but it, it, generally, it, it never happens, no? We say dog, and in, in Another language we call the same perro, uh, hawk, or well, there is so many uh, words in any language for calling these things. No, this is a, a good idea. I think so. The develop that Ferdinand de Saussure used to give to this idea probably is not so good. <laughs> but the, the the first idea, I think that this is really clever. Then, 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 it's a sem semiotic system. Language is a semiotic system, no? Semiotic, it has to be with sign, with symbols. With, and he, he said that 
uh, well, it's a semiotic system because it has seen signs. And he developed a, a, a theory of the sign that nowadays so many people use, obviously. Uh, very interesting, uh, where he distinguished any sign have signifier and signify it. We will see now. These are the two guys that develop the semiotics at the very beginning. Uh, well, first one, Fernand de Sassur, and second one, Charles Sanders Pierce. So each one uh, developed some part of the actual science of the semiotics. Uh, as you can read here, Ferdinand de Sassur developed especially at the very beginning of the of the last century, the, what, and at the end of the 90s, 19th, uh, the division of signifier and signifier. It, it theory was enriched by the, the notions and the theory of Paris about symbol, icon, and index, and some other kind of things. Let's see a little what is the, the distinction that they did. What is a sign? A sign. Well, for Ferdinand de Sassur is a successful, understandable form of communication. He is trying to explain the communication, and that's why he, he realized that in any communication you you can hear things but it's so different the things that we have inside that the thing that we hear it's so different so so that's why every sign should have two things signifier and signify it which one is it's it's uh, well, the signifier, for example, in the word rose, yeah, is obviously the word rose. <laughs> the signifier is the sign, no? Uh, it's part of the sign, no? The word, the thing that you, we can hear, see, yeah, as it says, no? An emotion, gesture, image, sound, pattern, or even that conveys meaning and communicate the thing that we use to communicate to each other. It, it, it so uh, it is very interesting thing. No, rose, rose, rose. Four letters R O S E. That is the signifier. Four letters. Yeah, or or the or the sound of rose. No, and. Then, what is the signifier? Well, is the thing that we have inside of our mind. The thing that we associate this, this signifier, these four letters, with the, the thing that we have. No. The concept that a signifier refers to the meaning it conveys. It conveys. It's a meaning that we convey. It is a conventional thing. It's a conventional thing because, and be careful with this, be careful with this. It's a conventional thing because, because we can put to these four letters another meaning. For example, for me, for any other culture, rose, uh, for example, in Spanish, uh, uh, it will be rosar. No? Uh, that is so different meaning, no? Uh, or, or could be that, that late, for example, in, in, in another language. Rose, uh, well, we put in English to these four letters this meaning, no? This concept, this concept that is inside of us. And we link each other. Uh, this is the, well, this is Ferdinand Sassor. We will say a little more. Uh, uh, as you, you see, you see, um, well, some other develop of this idea distinguish that not all the people know connotation and denotation. 
connotation no? how the things uh, are inside of us for example the connotation is here you can read are the feelings the ideas and cultural meanings which are associated with the word or object not the literal meaning not the literal meaning for example rose could be a, a beautiful thing for many people no well because the people that we love uh, gave us in the past some rose in a very special moment of our life and so each time when i see a rose well i feel so good probably could be this that the connotation and the denotation is just the literal or primary meaning of the words in contrast in contrast to the feelings of ideas that the word suggests but the well, is just the abstract concept uh, we can say the abstract concept of, uh, they, remember for these guys all the language is just conventional conventional well i don't know if you agree with them if you see that there could be a little develop a very interesting develop here don't worry if you cannot see, I will explain you later. But I, I, I want to know how much smart are you? <laughs> Any one of you discover a little problem here? No, it's, it's not so easy, obviously, because, and that's why uh, so many times passed, uh, and nobody discovered some little problem here. Don't worry, let's continue. I will explain what thing we need to develop better these ideas. So, then, then we have the uh, another distinction of pairs, as I told you, no? the notion of icon, the iconic status. For sure, you will remember the, the iconic a house for the brain health that i showed it to you no it's very iconic no? postmodern art you just try to put icons in the society no to show their ideas well it, it was uh, it meaning was developed by charles uh, a and he said, well, what is an icon? Icon. Well, are signs where the signifier resembles the signify. There is some resemble. This is the most important part. And as you as you can see, well, uh, you can find there a speaker, and the speakers in the reality are more or less in that way, that shape and you can find the waves of the sound in front of the speaker and that's why icons resembles the things of the reality the signify no the signify this is the, the most important part and symbols symbols well have have not these kind of things sign are signs where the relation between signifier and signified is purely conventional and culturally specific yeah, it's, it's very interesting no? because when you see that sign i don't know what do you think about that sign. what what what, uh, what is the first idea that came to your mind when you see that circle with black and yellow colors probably in many cultures it it, it, it it is a way to show that uh, well you have to be care you no know, alarm 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 uh, take care that something bad could happen i don't know probably could mean so many different things in so many different circumstances you no know? but lonely it means nothing yeah 
there is not resemble to anything. And finally, we can we find the indexes. These are signs where the signified is caused by the signified. And, and, and it, it, it's clear, no? If we can see smoke, well, smoke needs some kind of fire. Uh, the, the fire causes the smoke. So we can see, uh, well, if we see that, that, that sign, probably it, it's saying, well, be careful, there could be one fire there, or there is a smoke. Uh, and so on. And finally, well, with this idea, they developed a good a good theory of the language with syntax. Uh, that for sure you have heard about that in your school. <laughs> in your school, you will remember subject, verb, predicate all parts of the uh, phrase each phrase and uh, well well these two guys were the ones who begin who began all this theory that you study st haven't studied in your school well, it, it is very interesting so let's go one step ahead with Ferdinand de Sassou, no? and we can repeat this idea, no? the connection between the signifier, and the signified is arbitrary, is arbitrary, is mere conventionalism. So, uh, as I explained to you, we can agree, yes, yes there is, well, because you can put another signifier to the same concept you know, and you can relate and it happens in in every language you we put another words to the same concept you no know? it's so it's very arbitrary but this could be a little hard to understand this is an extreme idea this is without language thought is vague and charted nebula I don't know. I don't know what do you think about this phrase. Is well, obviously, could we can find some reason that if we don't take care very well of the things that are involved here, there will be a lot of risks. What kind of risks? Well, well, well obviously, obviously. Or first, the, the good intuition of Sassur, no? The good intuition, obviously, how we think with using some language, using some language. And probably, if you speak many languages, you will realize that you, some things, probably, the things are of our home, we, th we used to think with the language of our parents, you know? And the, the things of the career, you should think in, in, with the language of the, the, the university it used to be English, no? And the things of the, well, of your tribe or of, of your community, probably, you used to think with that kind of words of your community. Yeah. And it's right, it's right. We, used to think with the, uh, the language and without the language it's so difficult to think to have some kind of reasoning and yeah this is the the truth that are behind of these words but the the risk which is the risk now let's go ahead with the risk what well, the risk the risk is that I will say with some words of Leonardo Polo, a philosopher, no? that is very clear. Is very clear in this in this uh, idea. Our thought, our intelligence, is more than the language. 
please write this thing. No? Our intelligence is more than the language. It's richer, it's richer. That's why the intelligence could choose uh, with the will, obviously, the connection between concept and words. And can develop the concept and could be deeper in each concept uh, and could say, well, it's richer the intellect. Uh, so it is possible to, to think, to think with, without words, without words. The language is not all. So many philosophers after Ferdinand de Saussure will say, well, uh, we can just can think in the things uh, if we can speak. And no, it is not true. So many times we have an idea without words and we don't, we don't know how to explain that idea. Uh, and after some time, after some reflection, we say, well, I can explain my idea in this way. But first we have the idea. The idea is more powerful than the language. It's more powerful than the language. And probably uh, any idea uh, is well explained with the language. So this is the risk. Obviously, I, I told you the solution of Leonardo Polo that for me is really clever. It's really, really clever. Um, it's incredible because there is a, another philosopher, Wittgenstein, <laughs> that he used so many things of the language and, and so many logics and many things. At, and at the end of his book, he said, well, and this is all that the, we can say in philosophy. There is, there could be nothing any new in philosophy. <laughs> Incredible, because he resolved all things with the language, no? Yeah, so, so obviously he, he was so proud of his book. And obviously it was not the last book of, of Wittgenstein, but in any case. Tasnin, you raised your hand. Do you want to say or ask something? Yes. Um... I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. Okay, sorry, just give me one. Okay. No. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I was using two devices and there was some, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So my question is based on the signifier and the signified. And it's, I guess I'm just trying to understand it in a practical sense because when it becomes too metaphysical, I get lost. <laughs> so I'm just relating it back to reality. Yeah. So um, correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding, but I think what I understand here is that when a person speaks, the actual concept that they're referring to, or rather, rather the, the speech is the signifier, but the concept that they are trying to get out from that particular speech is what is the signified. And so yes. you can also see the connection in this through the connotation and denotation because they're connoting what they are signifying through the signifier. And then um, the signified is the denotation. Yeah. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. As, as I, you can see here, uh, what is the signifier? Well, the, the four letters outside you, or, or the thing that you hear here. Uh, okay, yeah, you, it's correct. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, perfect. So, uh, let's go again with our Ferdinand de Sassur. One example of this, uh, extreme ideas of the risk that could that you could have a not understanding very well the language not understanding the very well the word that i told of leonardo polo is you can find here in my chip for court no so he said at the end of the day, knowledge is governed not by a theory of knowledge, 
but by a theory of discursive practice. Yeah, all things here are uh, a matter of rhetorics. If you say very well the things, you will convince the people. And yeah, because the the language is all conventional. It's all conventional. And well, if there is some truth, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. That uh, the well, the knowledge, the things that we have in our mind, is have nothing to to. Uh, it's not related with reality and how we know reality and how uh, and what kind of approach and there is no truer at, at the end of the day there is no beauty there is not good there there is outside of us it could be a chaos no uh, the things that are important is just the things that are in our mind because inside of our mind all things are conventional so uh, that's why the only thing that that matters here is the theory of the dis discourse uh, how you convince the people and in this way you will have power convincing the people uh, and you can change their mind or or you can be the prisoner in the uh, panopticon in the panopticon yeah and, and you will be always watched and you will be normalized and you will be act in some way uh, so what do you think about this theory uh, it's really an extreme theory <laughs> i don't know if you realize that there could be a lot of problems you know? a lot of problems uh, yes Abiraham. Um, uh, morning, sir. Yeah, I I wanted to ask what uh, just a second. I wanted to ask what uh, what um, Foucault means by the theory of knowledge. Yeah, the, he he means the usual theory of knowledge, the classical one, that says that you, to to create your ideas mm. first, you have to take care about what, the reality. Yeah. What is the reality? Um, first, you have to see, for example, that beard that is there. And then you will realize uh, that this swimming in the lake and probably have some pro properties. And you will develop little by little seeing the things in the reality, the experimental reality you will know the reality this is the classical i will explain more in in a few minutes about the classical theory of knowledge but he said no it, it's absolutely false it, 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 it don't make any kind of mistake uh, the thing that you have in, in your mind all of them are conventional have nothing to do with with the reality and how you know the reality the experimental reality Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. I think to some extent, after thinking about it, I would agree with Michael Foucault. <laughs> because uh, sure, you may know, you may know what reality, you may know truth, but uh, if you never truly discuss it with other people other than yourself, then yeah. all that knowledge is just contained within you. And we can't really call it knowledge until, you know, we can scrutinize it and then other people can agree with it. So to that extent, I mean, even in how we do um, exams, take for example, university, I mean, you can mm -hmm. never just, uh, you cannot pass from, you know, your one, two, three, four by just reading and never, you know, showing what you've read without proving it. Yeah, so I think it's uh, it's discursive because you know we're meant to put, we're meant to write, we are meant to do exams, we're meant to discuss in class. So I think yeah, theory of knowledge is is governed by discursive practice. It's how we build on ideas. It's how we share ideas. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with that at some point, but you, you, you I don't know if uh, he said well, it's not governed by the theory of govern uh, knowledge, but by the theory of discourse. And obviously, obviously, when we talk 
and that's why there are less than uh, lectures in the university. When we talk, we, we discover the, some truths, no? and we develop our mind. That's why it, the, the university makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this, yeah, I think that you got the point uh, that could be a mix of of things, no? How we develop you know, or, or, or mind? Yeah, could be, uh, could be. I, I will explain a little the, the, uh, in a few minutes. Okay, some some other question or comment? No one. A dear uh, man, I think that you have raised uh, your hand. Well, in any case. Let's go ahead with our presentation. So, at the end of the day, all these authors are part of the history, as you can uh, see, no? Who is the first guy that, well, not the first guy, because all modernity uh, distinguish and divide and unconnect, and it's not well connected to reality, with our mind, as I explained in the one of the last lectures. Uh, but this 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 slide was a, a, a very good synthesis of the the conclusions of the modernity. No, the chaos, the noumenon, is not related with our mind. What is related? What is related? Well, uh, we can only understand the phenomenon the things that are inside of, of us how we perceive uh, the reality and this is the phenomenology also approach no uh, but uh, and if we uh, if this is the starting point of all our theory it is true yeah if we cannot connect the world with our mind it is true what this knowledge is just a convention, just. The, pro the problem is not, not that the knowledge is conventional, the, the problem is the word just, just conventional. So, let's go to other author. Very influential also, author, more than you can see. Well, it's not so famous uh, as this next one, but but it, it is very influential. Jack Lacan. Jack Lacan. Uh, he said, uh, for sure you will remember so many uh, buildings that I show it to you. Uh, uh, the architect, uh, postmodern uh, niche architect is very clear now so he said he mix he mix uh, the science that were developed at that time psycho uh, psychology semiotics and law because he is very interested in the law so he is a kind of architect of postmodern psychoanalysis semiotics on the law on the field of law and fifth thing that he realized that is there is an unconscious, no? A new word uh, he he used to f f uh, follow Freud in so many of his ideas that the we are governed by the unconscious. Probably you have heard about Freud, no? We are governed by the our unconscious. That's why he developed the methodology of psychoanalysis. Uh, the, uh, of psychoanalysis. What is the psychoanalysis? Well, I will not see the conscious. I will try to discover what is behind of you, what kind of unconscious you have, and what kind of things governs you to act in that way. So, for Jack Lacan, the unconscious is the repository of knowledge, power, agency, and desire. You can find there so many things, no? 
uh, for Freud, it's uh, all things are sexual, no? Uh, uh, the, why uh, the mothers and uh, feed uh, their babies, no? Because uh, it's a sexual approach of the mother and the baby, <laughs> incredible, and, and so on. That is Freud, no? That is in our unconscious, and so on. Well, this guy, Jack Lacan, that's not only in the things of desire, but the, the things of power, no? We feel the power in our own conscience, and that's why we have some behavior in some sense or in another. No? It's a mix of all the authors that, that we saw. No? Uh, there we find the structure of language. The structure of language. He, remember, uh, Ferdinand de Sassur said that, that there is a thing that we can see. And there is an invisible structure that we can find. That's why some of and, and some of these authors are, are part of the movement of structuralism. Structuralism, because there is a structure behind of, of us that we have to discover. We have to discover. This is the the most interesting idea, no? Uh, well, we don't, we don't control what we say. This is a, a consequence of all this mix of ideas, no? Of this cocktail <laughs> of ideas of, of the last author that we saw. Uh, we don't, we don't have any kind of control of what we say. It's, it is interesting because. Uh, if Ferdinand de Sassur uh, said that, well, it's a convention and you, we put arbitrary the meaning, well, he said, no, no, there is, well, there is not control. We just repeat the thing that we have heard. And obviously, uh, in our unconscious, there are a lot of pressure. There's a predetermined structure behind of us. And we are more or less like machines, like machines, no? Uh, machines, you press the button and the electricity is, it passes and will activate something and then will be activated some other thing and the light will turn uh, on uh, and so on and so on. Yeah, it is action, reaction. We are all the things of human life, it could be explained by by psycho uh, psychology by action reaction um the thing that we cannot explain what we cannot explain because the that kind of things are in the unconscious yeah so finally language never represents our identity this is more or less the the next idea that is interesting no uh, well, who am I? Who am I? I'm Jai Van Jam Van Jam. This says the the film of Les Miserables. I don't know if you remember that song. I really enjoyed that film. I think that should be compulsory to see that film. <laughs> uh, well, but in any case. Uh, at one point of the 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 film, uh, the author asks himself, "Who am I? No, who am I? Uh, I am number. I am number. The number that the uh, policeman gave me in the prison, or I a man? No. Well, it's the same question that we have here, no? With Jake Lacan, with all the things that we say, well, we, you are just machine. There is no identity, identity here. I don't know if you realize the problem here, no? Uh, well, uh, think about any kind of machine, no? Your fridge, your fridge, well, you can reproduce 
to switch and we react and act and react with electricity in the same way, or three or a hundred or a thousand of fridge and will be the same, will be the same. Each fridge have no identity, have nothing special. It's the same form, it's, uh, it's the same thing, one and another. Yeah, probably our pets is a little different, no? Have a little, each pet have a, a kind of psychology different and that's why we can put a name to the to the pet that is i don't know if some of you used to put a, a name to the fridge to the freezer <laughs> to the, no because these things have no identity uh, human if is 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 predetermined uh, by the thought by the conscious it's like a machine and have no identity that's why postmodern news so many people say it's the end of the person. There is no identity in any person. Subject is absolutely divided and have nothing to do with the representation of the subject. Yeah, that was that's why that image is so powerful, and the world is so powerful to to show what is modernism. Yeah. Modernism, you can re represent, put many kinds of representations of the person and in so many different ways, uh, more or less with a good approach to the person, but it is a machine, it's a machine. Uh, you can reproduce what, what uh, how many times, the, uh, what, what, what uh, so many times if you want a hundred a thousand times you can reproduce the and because there is no identity it will be the machine no the machine that uh, there are not a deep approach to the person who is marine Monroe well, is the thing that are is showed or, or the image that are showed in the television so many times and behind of the representation there is nobody there is nobody <laughs> it's incredible no it's incredible that kind of approach uh, so we will see now another author i don't know if you know which is this author don't worry because i, so I want to stop here a little i don't know if you have any question about Jack Lacan or Marilyn or Marid Monroe? <laughs> Sally, any question about Marilyn Monroe? No. Sorry, I cannot hear you very well. <laughs> I'm saying mine is about Lacan. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry, can you repeat? The, I, I only hear the the name. <laughs> or let's go ahead with Calvin. Yeah, um, okay. So I think Lacan, okay, maybe contradict me if I'm wrong, but I think Lacan is very self-contradictory. <laughs> because he says, first of all, language is, um, it's uh, what? It's determined by your unconscious. So that means also, man, your experiences, how you feel and your feelings. So mm -hmm. if it's determined by that, and that in a sense is you, because your unconscious is not an unconscious of someone else. It's yours, only yours. Mm -hmm. but then when he says now that uh, now uh, language does not represent our identity. So you're telling me that my un unconscious, which is mine and mine alone, does not represent who I am. There's a very, yeah, that's the kind yeah, of that, contradiction that, that I've seen. Well, uh, in this point, I don't know if there could be a contradiction. Why? Because uh, he realized that there is an unconscious. And, and mm -hmm. for me, this is a great idea. Also for jurisprudence. No? Try to think about how the unconscious work. The unconscious could be a source of law. For me, yes. For me, yes. And, uh, for me, this is a, a good idea. 
But the problem, but the problem is the way that he understands the unconscious. He understands more or, or less in the way that Freud understands the unconscious. We are uh, just machines, determined, predetermined. Mm. Uh, yeah. And that's why I put this, the example of the freezer, yeah, or the <clears> fridge, yeah. You can, you will never put a, a name to the freezer. The freezer yeah. could be the unconscious, no? Because all the freezer are the same. <laughs> uh, the fridge yeah, or the freezer. Yeah. Okay, you, you follow me in that idea? Okay, what, um, okay, so you're saying that our unconscious is it's a pre predeterminate. We have no control over it. And that's what makes us machine-like. Yeah, you have no any specific identity. Okay. All right. Okay, um, I still don't agree, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, though, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the, 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 the most important thing is try to develop your, your mind and to try to understand what... First, uh, and try to understand the authors and what cool uh, true you find and what uh, uh, error you can find and, and w w principally, what do you think about the reality, no, or, or the truth or, or, or the discourse? That is the most important thing. Okay, but good. Okay. Anyone else? Sally, let's go again. Can you hear me? More or less. Now, yes. Okay. So my question was, Lacan says that the disjunction between identity and its representation yeah. occurs in the first eight months of our lives and is forever lost. So which is, what is this identity in the first eight months and why is it lost at eight months? Like what makes... What is the change that makes this identity be lost, and what is this identity exactly? I hope you heard me. Okay. Uh, well, as far as I can understand uh, this author, Jack Lacan, uh, well, is this this thing that I told you, no? Uh, we, we lost our identity principally principally because there 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 is no identity there there are not you it's it's a problem of all the modern authors uh, because uh, at the end of the day at the end of the day they have not a good notion of the person what is the person yeah and this is a, a great deal in the history of philosophy. The, the person, the, 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 the notion of person was developed in well, so many disputes, in the, the conflicts about the, in the Trinity and the, about God. If God is person, is not person, if there are so many persons or not. In the, in the first uh, millennium, the first in the first eight centuries of our era, huh? so and then modernity took that concept, that that concept of person, uh, but he changed a, lo yeah, a lot the concept. Uh, we, I will try to explain next week that, um, but just an idea here, no. And the person was the absolute more more or less uh, the principal aim for Kant and so so many things, no. And then with the psycho uh, uh, psychoanalysis and the uh, psychology and in the postmodernism, the person is no longer the osea is no longer uh, the subject is no longer the absolute is no longer the ultimate end. The person is just a product of the psychoanalysis. Um, just a, is a, you can say in a word, it's I. I. But I, what is I? What is I? I am, no? I. Uh, I is just a reflection, no? It's an idea that you have in your mind about yourself. I am, no? <laughs> Uh, 
this is just an idea and the person is more than idea than an idea no? this is the problem of the, all these authors so when all this the psychologists say that person is the i the 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 ones that i recognize that i have feelings i have i well at the end of the day the person is just an idea and is this is the problem and the idea can be reproduced and so on okay let's go again with this author i don't know if you know who is this guy jack derrida yeah uh, so he's a very influential author nowadays probably one of the greatest men of the postmodernism area and who put all the rules to the new way of thinking that it's in, in, in interesting to know some ideas about this philosopher this french philosopher and the one of the first things that he did in his career, in his approach, is a critique of phenomenology. Phenomenology. What is phenomenology? Is well, it's a part of the philosophy that have some methodology developed by Husserl, Edmund Husserl. I don't know if you have heard about him. So uh, phenomenology used to study the phenomenon, no? Is uh, is in his very beginning thoughts. It is a way to try to understand, to go again, to to achieve the world, no? The things itself, how to understand, to to recover the 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 knowledge of the things itself. But the problem with phenomenology is that is based on Kantian uh, schemes. Kantian divide phenomenon and the phenomenon, as you as you will remember, no? So the way that they say that uh, have to the methodology is to take care very careful of the phenomenon, the phenomenon without any kind of prejudice, without any kind of preconception, uh, and that's what. You, you can see and just can see the, the things and you will discover so many things. Seeing, uh, taking care, hearing, uh, taking care of the, all the kind of the phenomen phenomena that appears in your body, in your mind. So the critique of the reader is, is uh, this one, no? uh, that phenomenology only disclose the individual's life experience. And he said, we have to take care some, about something deeper, something deeper, the deep of experience. It is more important than, than, than the phenomenon, no? Uh, the deep of experience could in fact only be an effect of the structures which are not themselves experienced. Remember, there is a structure behind of that that is more important. The other things, this is just uh, the things that are showing representations of the things that we have inside. So, you will remember again the, the, this slide, no? So, we can say uh, the first, the first uh, philosopher's thing that we can have any kind of access to the world. But can't say no. The world is a chaos. It's a phenomenon that we cannot have access at any point. The only thing that we can have is the phenomenon. Uh, the phenomenon we put the, the phenomenon in some categories of our mind, and that's the way we know things. Okay, it's just to remember. So the philosophers. The first philosophers are the Greek philosophers, are 
realist uh, because they think that the reality of the world can be known and we have an, some access. They can say no, there is a chaos. No, phenomenology is in, interested in the phenomenon, the things how appear in ourselves. And he said we have to take out uh, all the assumptions of the prejudice, and that's why just see the phenomenon. You know? How and let's see how far we can go just seeing the phenomenon. Finally, finally, there is Derrida. Uh, Derrida is the pronunciation in, Ita, in Italian. Well, Derrida, I think that it could be in English. In any case, uh, he said, well, let's take care not about the phenomenon, not about the phenomenon, but about the the structure of our mind, how the, the things are structured in our, uh, in our minds. No? This is the most important part of the philosophy and we, and we have to, to discover our unconscious things, the things that are behind of that, that determine our, uh, our way of thinking. That, that there you will find that there could be so many presumptions, assumptions uh, that are conditioning you in your way of thinking, in your behavior, in your actions, in your life, finally. So more or less, this is the approach of the reader, uh, or the reader <laughs> also. That's why uh, well, it, it, is, it is very interesting to, to to understand in which part of the history of philosophy we are. So, he says, with this basis, the following. First, uh, follows Sir Ferdinand de Sassor in the division between Lang, the abstract layer, the invisible layer of the language, and the parole. The actual speech, the thing that we hear, that we read. Uh, so, you can see uh, that, no? Uh, and th there is something deeper in ourselves that we have to take care. So, the, and this is very important. What is the end of his philosophy? Is deconstructing language. Deconstruct all the things that, the, the representations that we have uh, outside of our uh, the construction uh, of to see what happened to see you know, in order to show how the meaning of one signifier includes with within it another signifier you know, to discover well the the reality again it's a, a, another quest how you remember the American you will remember the American realism the Scandinavian realism. Now this now I try to approach the reality, but doesn't uh, this guy uh, the reality is not so in, in the same way, no? Uh, is uh, well more more or less like a nebula, <laughs> a nebula. So he said uh, we have to deconstruct. What means deconstruct? Well, to change things and to see what happened, more or less. Uh, for example, we realize the same example that I gave to you, you know, a dog, puppy, uh, or pet, or lion, and all these, all these words. If we put uh, like a certain name, well, or like another name uh, to our pet, lion, well, at the end of the day, we are uh, seeing that uh, one uh, signifier could be included in another signifier because are more the, or less the same thing. No? And there is a lot of, of obscure things in the language that we have to discover in order to be clear what we are talking about. Uh, so if we change the rules, if we change the rules, probably we will discover things. If we put another name, 
to the same thing, we will discover, for example, that all the language is mere conventionalism. No? This is just a convention. No? Um, that's why this is the, the question of the quest. Yeah. Must not the structure have a genesis? And must not the origin, the point of genesis, be already structured in order to be the genesis of something? So here, remember that that the, all the previous authors talk about the the structure, the structure, no? That is behind of us in the in conscious in the in the same language, uh, uh, like and put together the unconscious with the deepest structure of the language, uh, uh, link these two things, Fernandez has also linked the, our thought with the structure of the language. And he said that if without the language, uh, there is a nebulosa. And uh, uh, for sure you, you, you will remember the thing that we took in the previous uh, period of our, our, uh, our lecture. No? So, uh, this structure uh, obviously is the genesis of something that is predetermined also, no? but, but some prejudice, some assumptions, and we have to discover the, the starting point, the starting point, the, the truly starting point. So, the aim of his philosophy is not to create a conceptual basis of a great philosophy, very structured, very organized, with uh, rules, very clear rules. And, no, it's so different. It is to pursue a fresh understanding of the things that we, we know that probably are in the unconscious, no? in the deepest structure of our minds. We, he, he will try to discover what is behind of that, uh, at least in, in, in it is the purpose, but and to do so, to do that, we have to change the rules. We have to change any kind of rules, any kind of rules, and we will get then fresh understandings. Yeah, fresh understandings. It's, it it is interesting because the aim of his philosophy is not to get the the truth. He don't believe in any truth. <laughs> in any stable truth. Uh, it's not uh, to achieve happiness like, <laughs> like the morality science. It's not to, no, it's just to to get some fresh understandings, no? Uh, of, of what uh, is the human mind and the human conception, some kind of that, no? So in this way, what is the method of, do, of achieving that aim? Which is change the rules, is to change the rules. If we change the general rules into exception, uh, we will realize what happened, what happened, you know? Well, it could be, uh, could be so many examples, no? Uh, for example, people in so many countries used to drive at the right. In other countries, if principally Britain and all the colonies that were in the past colonies of, of the British Imperium, the past um, and Japan, but in other places, uh, people used to sorry at the left, and in other places used to drive at the at the right. No? Uh, well, what happens if we change that rule? We will see that probably, well, it is possible, it is possible. So we have in, in this point just a presumption, an assumption that you have to do it always at the right, or you have to do always at the right. But this, you, you will realize that it's mere conventionalism, this, that, that there is not, not stable true in this. Uh, yeah, it's just, just very conventionalism. You can change also any kind of rules. No, now the the 
the men are the governors of one country, the authorities. Well, let's put them the, the women. Why not? Why not? Okay. And then you will realize that all things are conventional, that, that there is no true at the end of the day. No. Uh, not stable true. It's just developing more or less like the, the conception of Nicholas Luhmann. You will remember, no, that this uh, autopoietic system that is developing with its own, its own rules and by itself uh, without any kind of predetermined, well, uh, just with, with its own rules. No? So, but then, then he said, it is just to get, remember, what is the aim to get? fresh understandings you know, uh, of what uh, things are. Uh, then uh, all changes uh, are temporary, at least in theory, at least in, in, in some books of the, the real. Uh, <laughs> so so if, if you see this, well, then we, what we have to do to change again, the vice versa, no? to turn uh, again into the same position no? and the woman, the man will also learn again and if there is some change well because it's just to know the, our understandings but because if the woman govern there will be also an imposition uh, and a conventional income you have to change again there is there is not aim in the society uh, and it's just we have to just to realize what the men are mere conventionalism we have to change our priorities for example uh, in the past people think that it's, it's very Im important uh, god in our lives well let's see thing yeah not more in god but in freedom no in freedom. let's get a free life uh, but, but remember, it is also, uh, it is temporary. We have then not freedom, then we can find another value. Uh, if we can talk about values, <laughs> uh, well, for me now, the most important thing is not freedom, is property. I, I need as much property as we can, <laughs> uh, as I can. You know? So, and then I have to change and to change and to change. And that, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you will realize that all is convention, that all is arbitrarity. Um, there is not, nothing stable, there is not, <laughs> it's incredible, no? So, uh, he, he said with this methodology, uh, well, uh, we will find the deepest notion of what uh, we are thinking about. You know? uh, in this methodology seeks to understand it of certain deeply hidden philosophical presuppositions and prejudice in Western culture. Yeah, that's why uh, you will realize that uh, how he gets the, the famous, no? If you fight against the Western culture, so many people will follow you because so many people are against Western culture. If you are against capitalism, so many people will follow you. <laughs> he said, well, we have to take uh, out all our presuppositions or, uh, uh, or prejudice uh, and then we will try to understand better the, the humankind and the way he thinks in things. No? So, at the end of the day, I say, what we can conclude? Well, the, the, in Western uh, civilization, Western culture, there are so many divisions that are absolutely arbitrary, no? Arbitrary, no? And there are a lot of dichotomies, like the distinction between sacred and profound, no? 
well, you can see, for example, uh, that for one culture, the sacred is the sun, for another is the some stones that they uh, find found in some place and well, uh, with their hands they made a statue that is the god or the gods of that culture uh, it's it's a matter of convention it's absolutely arbitrary uh, distinction between sacred and profane and for, for other cultures the only sacred is the human kind or and the, and the, the mere distinction <laughs> of signifier and signified is also a convention no? the, because you can put uh, any signifier to any signified no? and the signified is it's also a convention no? it's, it's the same it's all things all the concept that we have in our mind is a, a convention no? there is nothing stable nothing is stable no? and the, the the typical idea of Western civilization that uh, distinguish mind and body is just a convention. It's just a convention. So, for the without, there, there is n nothing true. Using using his own philosophy, <laughs> we can say that the the Rida is also a, a convention. <laughs> All his whole philosophy, well, is a convention, and there is no no. We have not to believe in him because he, he, he just a convention of his, his philosophy. In any case, in this way, he destroyed the, the, the conception of identity, identity, identity. And he he used to have, as I told you, this is storytelling, no discourse against everything, against culture, against. Um, against the rules, against the Western culture, against the the communities also, the, I, com, the com, community's identity. Because, why? Why? Because in its name, Europe have been unleashed the worst violences, no? You can find in the First World War and in the Second World War so many problems about the 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 country's identity you know, they fight because it seems to be that we are part of something but it, it is not true you are not part of anything yeah you are yourself you are not part of, of french or of spain or, or kenya no you are yourself you are not you have no identity remember the same the same problem with identity with lacan uh, the same here but in, 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 in amplified to the social identity. No? So the crimes of xenophobia, racism, anti-Semitism, religious or nationalist fanatics are made uh, in the name of identity, of some identity, no? or the identity of white people, the identity of some religion, no? And, uh, and it is not true for for this author, no? It is not true. So it, it, it is interesting uh, because at the end of the day, what we have to do, we should destroy all the presuppositions, all the prejudices in Western culture, no? To develop a new culture, no? So, what we can see now, no? that the methodology, that was just a methodology, that more or less uh, uh, in the antique culture, in the, well, you can find the same methodology. This more or less is called uh, the reduction at, at absurdum, the reductionist, uh, the reduction uh, to the absurdity. No? Uh, you say, well, if we did the things in another way, for example, if we could break the rule of the rule is not to kill the innocent, but if we break the rule, what will happen? Well, so many absurdities. No, you, you can kill anyone that is crossing the street uh, 
because there is no rule. No? Um, probably it will be as hard said a, a, a club of suicides. No? <laughs> so this is the technique that people use in the past, but it was just a, a, a theory. Uh, a theoretical approach to the problem and said, well, it is absurd. Jack Derrida said, no, this is the methodology that we have to to, to say, but never say that something is, uh, have any kind of absurdity. Well, it, it, because there is not, not a stable true. There is not a stable true. The, the only aim uh, now is, well, to get fresh understanding to destroy all our presuppositions and prejudices of western culture so uh, calvin do you want to say something or to ask something oh no sorry that was from before i forgot to to lower it ah, okay okay i don't know what do you think about this author uh, <laughs> Is very influential. Now I think that you can understand very well postmodernism, not just with art, but also with the, the deepest idea that are behind the art. I don't know if you agree with Jack Derrida, if you are against him, and why? And why you agree or not with with Jack? <laughs> Any one of you? I wouldn't say I <laughs> I agree with Jack, but <laughs> I do understand um, the concepts you're trying to put forward of postmodernism. How we've uh, postmodernism now is a uh, it's a it's a bit of a of a philosophy whereby you're disconnected from kind of community, any sort of uh, communal understanding or nationality or even part of a greater continent. It focuses on you as an individual and whatever philosophies you as an individual choose, that is now your truth towards you. So whatever, whatever you hold true is true for you in the sense that um, you are not subject to any form of order, as you mentioned earlier. You're not mm -hmm. subject to any form of structure. Structure is something that is to be determined by you, the self, what you want to do, what you want to pursue. And I think it's even, it even trickles down to maybe the kind of music that we listen to. I mean, it's very kind of a rebel-ish, kind of I do what I want to, when I want to kind of yeah. philosophy. Yeah. It's just to break the rules because, uh, because you, he said, to get fresh understanding of what happened. Well, <laughs> Uh, but you must break the rules at the end of the day because you have to break the rules because all things are presuppositions and there is and the presuppositions uh, at the end of the day all presupposition is bad is bad yeah. is bad and, and it is not clear probably it's not so bad to think that the we have to respect the life of the innocent <laughs> and probably could be a presupposition but a good presupposition also, and we can build knowledge in, in this presupposition. Yes, uh, so peace. Um, I think it's very interesting to say yeah. that mm -hmm. um, nothing holds truth, that nothing is real, because even that cancels out his idea again. Mm -hmm. So whatever he has said is not true because of his philosophy. So we shouldn't believe it because it's just there. And then again, um, I think the examples he, or the ones you gave about, for instance, uh, driving on the left versus driving on the right, um, men in governance and women in governance, I think those examples were okay within his mm -hmm. philosophy. But when you come to the, to the main ideas from natural law, the ones that protect the sacredness of life um, and happiness, it just, his idea becomes screwed because how will you um, explain, um, okay, because the general rule is do not kill. 
So if we make it vice versa, it means that now we should kill. So it's it becomes a bit... And, and then probably it could change. And, yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. stable. There is no reason for all. And yeah. It's... So that's, I, I just find his idea a bit off, but it's a very interesting thing to, yeah, mm. to like study and talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And just one more. I don't know. Duta. Um, I, I agree with this. I find his ideas, but they are quite interesting to learn. But I do think that it's it's a bit flawed in that, um, okay, and generally postmodernism in that um, if we are to interpret and understand things based on individual experience, there'll be no harmony in our knowledge because I'll interpret something in a different way from you. So it's, it's kind of hard to harmonize all of those ideas together. So I think that's where postmodernism goes wrong because it's, it's um, even I think in their different theories, it's really hard to find um, a harmonization between what each of them are saying. Yeah. And as such, I feel like that will cause so much disorder, even in legal interpretation. Yeah. And the end of the day, if, if we have, uh, if we have not, nothing in common, this, there is not a stable truth in any, in any way, we cannot speak. Because speak means that we have the same concept. We, we have, if we each one have his own concept, it is impossible to speak, to talk, to, 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 to transmit any concept because you have your concept, I have my concepts, and, and there is no connection between them. It's impossible to have this lecture now, with this, this knowledge. <laughs> it's incredible. Well, uh, we, we will talk a little more, but uh, I want to show you the antidote, the antidote for these kind of things. Uh, I know that there are so many people that want to, to, to say something, but we can talk uh, after the lecture or at the end. Yeah, because it is important now to understand better. I, I have never explained, and I will explain just a little, uh, the classical theory of knowledge, that is very complete theory of knowledge, I, I think so. And with this, you can resolve all the problems of all these authors, because at the very beginning, as I told you, you have the problem of modernity. In modernity, there is no connection between the world and, the, <laughs> and our knowledge, no? Or, or a bad connection, or a bad connection, or, or a very weak connection. Well, to understand the theory of knowledge, right, we have to take first of the four causes of the reality. It is Aristotle. Aristotle realized that all things in reality have four causes. You know? The material cause, the final cause, the formal cause, the efficient or agent is called so-called uh, cause. So, first, first, uh, think about this table, this table. What, what could be the element, the materials that the carpenter used to, to, uh, to make that table? Well, obviously, it was wood, wood. Uh, with wood, you can make a table, it's easy, no? Uh, but Wood alone is not the table. You have to give uh, and to give some some form that to that wood. To, uh, um, if you give that form, it will become uh, uh, that wood will become uh, a table. So the form is also the cause. It's the formal cause. It's the form that has the, the cause. Then. Uh, that could be uh, anything, but we humans put some aim to that thing. Why do we make uh, this table with three uh, legs? No? Uh, well, because we want to put not in the floor, but uh, in, a, a, in a very specific place, or pots, or, or things, or glasses. Uh, and that's why 
to this end for for dining will be very easy if we have things not in the floor but in a table no? this is the end no? uh, the final cause no? to have some dining and finally but the end cannot be achieved uh, if there is not carpenter there could, must be a carpenter uh, that put a lot of effort in uh, transforming that wood in a table in a, in, a, in a specific form with three legs to achieve that aim, you know, the dime, you know, the, well, the, the, the final cause. Okay, I think that you have heard about this in, probably in the school. <laughs> uh, but with these ideas, we will get a better knowledge about the theory of knowledge the classical theory of knowledge. For the theory of knowledge, uh, it's important uh, to understand how we can communicate our ideas, no? and how we get the concepts and what, how we inform ourselves about the world. How we inform the well, world, precisely getting the form. No? The form is the, 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 the most important thing, you know. The form of the world is, is that one, you know? it's a circular form with some continent. Remember, we are talking about this form, the, the, the formal cause. Uh, because when we get the form of the universe, is this the same form that will be in our mind? This is very important. Is this the same form? It is the same form. Obviously, it's not the, the, the same material. If we think, for example, if this is a phrase of, of Aristotle, if we think in a stone, the stone is in our, inside of us. But it's not inside of us in a material way, because it could be very, very, very very risky to have a stone inside of our brain no probably we will die in the next second no but we have the stone not in a material world but we have the form of the stone you know, of the stone and that's why we know the reality it's possible to know the reality because you know, we have the same thing uh, the same thing that is outside, it's inside of us, but not the material thing, but the form, in some way, in some way. And that's why we can discover things. And that's why uh, we can develop or think or, or, or knowledge. Uh, 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 we can predict that something could happen in the future. For example, so many uh, people say that well, at the end of this year, we will have the vaccine to coronavirus, the first vaccine. And the next year, there will be hundreds of vaccines approved and will be distributed. And, and probably if there is a second wave there are, uh, uh, of new virus, they are developing now well, uh, a vaccine to, 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 to solve these kind of problems and will be in the next year how we can predict the future because we understand the reality and we can uh, put there uh, well the order the same order that is in the reality the same form the same form uh, uh, and that's why we can predict that something will happen and we will see that will happen yeah if the world is not stable, uh, if we cannot have access to the world, we cannot predict the future. It is important. And all the science, all the science, the electronic cars uh, uh, and, the, and the ship and the travel to Mars and, and to the moon uh, well, and so on, we can develop the science because we understand the reality we understand is the same reality that they're outside and that, that, that one that is inside of us. That's we why we call to in 
form, to put the form of the world inside of us. So the, the form, the form is what we say that is the signifier, no? the signifier is the form, is the form. This is the, you will remember, no? in the same form, uh, well, uh, in some way. And the signifier, the concept, uh, the concept that we have inside of us. And finally, uh, it is important, it is important, there is a reference that is reality. It's connected. There, there, there are uh, uh, well, some reference to the reality. It is important to know to, to develop a little more the the thing. But I want to explain a little more about how we get the concept. This is very important because it's the essential part of the theory of knowledge. Natalie, yes, you want to say something or ask something? I'm so sorry, my contribution was for postmodernism. Sorry. Okay, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about now the concept, remember. Huh? Uh, how we get the concept? The, well, watching the reality, watching the reality. The first concept, how uh, any one of you that got the first uh, concept? Well, when you were a baby, you opened your eyes and you discovered that there is something outside of you. Days later, you will discover that that thing is good because it helps. And days later, many days later, you will discover that this mom. <laughs> no. Watching the reality, watching the reality is the way that all of us that uh, uh, we got the first concept. No, but not only watching, but also smelling, also hearing the reality, also testing the reality. And it is the normal way that we get the, the, the first notice of the reality, that we get the first form form of the reality. And that's a part of the form, no? Obviously, that we see is not the whole world, it's just a part of the world, not just a part, no? And with these things, all this kind of, of, of forms goes to our brain. To our brain, and in our brain, it mixed this kind of uh, are mixed uh, with our feelings, our emotion, with the sense of the touch, also. Uh, and this is a mix of things that 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 that, that at the end of the day forms the, not just the, the form of the world. Is the sensitive species? It's a mix of things. No, we when we saw, for example, uh, one bad things yesterday in the television. Well, or, or, or good thing. It it could be or funny thing or anything. Uh, you can you could be well tired or or happy or worry and probably it, the, the feelings you, you will get the the first concept good or bad for example if you receive a bad news and then you discover something well you will associate that good thing or bad thing with the feelings that of the moment no so finally with this mix of knowledge that is in a sensitive species, it's called the sensitive species. Uh, it interacts in, with many things in our, our brain. Uh, and now it, the psychology, the, the conscious and unconscious get together, put new things to, to this, to this uh, sensitive species. 
uh, then this is very interesting then uh, the intellect the spiritual intellect that have not not a uh, sensitive uh, things not material things that can get the uh, immaterial things get the form the form of the world but also the forms of the sense also the feelings although also all this kind of thing that, that he receives from this also with the psychology uh, forms that is added to the sensitive species the intellect uh, the material intellect you get all these kind of things and he adds some light some abstraction he, he distinguish see absolutely distinguish and and the intellect gives some sense okay, well the, the the human intellect knows the, the sense of, of the things no why the the water can stop the fire no why the water no? it, an animal there are so many psychological experiences and we'll never know why the the water can stop the, the fire but they can use uh, at one moment this uh, to to stop the fact that they don't know that the water is doing that because it's the cause it, it, it's the intellect the sense and uh, with another ideas uh, he can compare the world no he can compare the uh, that, that guy his intellect can compare the idea of the totality of the of the part and we are part of the world and we are inside of the world and can compare it and have so many conclusions so uh, the brain also the intellect also can put the intellect uh, the world in the middle of the cosmos yeah giving some context in the middle of the history even another kind of historical uh, uh, time space context and so on no? uh, it will give v give that idea some logic no Mix, mixing the words also and finally to, to the notion of earth or of world he will assign an, a name that could be the, the, the letters of the world no or the or the hearing of the world so this is the cognitive species. It's called the cognitive species. As you see, it is enriched. It's not the things, just the things that we receive. It's not, then we will be also a mix with the psychology and the things that happen in our brain. And this new species, the cognitive species, is not the sensitive species, but it has some relation. Yeah. I think that the postmodern authors emphasize, stress out that uh, we put a lot of things, uh, a lot of things in our knowledge. And it is true, it's absolutely true. But they forget that our knowledge have, is, have some relation with the reality. We can not think in anything without any form of the universe. Is real, absolutely related. Probably the Greek author emphasizes, stress out the contrary, that is related with the universe. And what is the middle point? That is related and then related. We receive some, but, we, but each one of us adds to that species so many things, so many things. And finally, this is the concept. And this is this concept when we are talking. About uh, are the concepts that we use and that's why we can talk and you know, we can give now uh, this lecture no? because all the concepts had something in common something in common and when I speak up and I, and I talk and I say to you something about the world you have something in your mind that is more or less some the same that is in my mind uh, about the the world well, well uh, i don't know if you have any question about the theory of knowledge that is very important to understand the 
that the, obviously the the, the 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 good things of the postmodern authors and the bad things that they forget that they do not connect the the any idea Georgina yes with the world with the reality Georgina yes um we had we had uh, interacted with this this thing this uh, theory of knowledge before but then okay. um but then i wanted to ask i didn't quite understand when you said is there when we reach the when we see when we reach the concept is it that the intellect gives knowledge to the when we send something the intellect gives information or knowledge so that we are able to identify that this that water is used to put off fire. What does so, the intellect do? What does the intellect? Uh, uh, in easy words, uh, the the classical authors say just the intellect gives light <laughs> to the sensitive species. This is the easiest word, no? But we 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 can say what is the meaning of giving light is enrich the concept enrich the sensitive species yeah if we have not that we we work like a machines yeah receiving giving like a like, like a computer but but the human intellect is richer the intellect enrich uh, I, I mentioned some things no compare the, uh, the, the the sensitive species with another species with another ideas with the sense of, of time this the sense of of, of, of space and put context there are so many things yeah probably the the, the 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 theory of knowledge is very deep very big uh, but, but the principal idea that i want to uh, give you know is that the intellect adds adds some something so light and that's why uh, uh, it's not just a matter of, of a subtraction is it's because he adds so many, many things uh, uh, well, i love this this, this uh, uh, topic uh, there is a lot of distinction between uh, uh, artificial intelligence and in our intelligent intellect uh, because artificial intellect intelligence just make a pattern make a pattern of so, so many different things they say well this is the pattern and i i will follow that but the, the in the our intellect is works so differently you know you a baby can see just one face and and will discover that all things or, or people that uh, will we, we'll recognize fiercely in the second time the mother and then we will we realize that all peoples were more or less like that and will give sense give sense is a thing that artificial intelligence cannot do that Rosalind, yes So um, just a clarification, according to this theory of knowledge, um, babies are not born with any knowledge in their minds. Is that what you're saying? But uh, clarification, sorry, about what? Um, so in the, when children are born, they don't have any prior knowledge. They don't have, sorry, in? Prior knowledge. Prior knowledge. So what, what do you, uh, 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 and what is the problem? Because I thought that we would have like first principles in the mind that would help us to understand reality. I thought that's what the yeah. process of acquiring knowledge was. Yeah, it, it's so, it really, uh, uh, it is a, a simple way of, uh, of explaining things the, that I miss so many parts. Uh, the, 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 we have principles, uh, yeah, uh, for example, uh, we, we will talk about this in three weeks or uh, four weeks uh, because here you can find so many 
well, the passive intellect that only receives and the active intellect and the active intellect have these kind of principles. Uh, yeah, to work. For sure, you have another a question. Do you, do you have another subject that you have heard something about that? I think so, no? Or yes, we learned this in, in ethics. Okay, well, it, it, it will help so much because we will see that uh, we have these kind of principles in, in our mind. Um, it gives some structures to us and are very logical, are very evident, and will help so much to... Well, I, I have to explain another thing. I, if we, I realize that I have not so much time now. <laughs> well, and time flies. Well, because we are feminist and critical race theory. I have to, well, at least some word. Uh, about this. This is the same architect Sahara Hadid from Iran uh, that this, uh, he made this Maxi Museum of Rome uh, of contemporary art. It's very interesting. No? It's also a postmodern architecture. Uh, so, but she gave to the, he tried to break the rules also, also, also uh, all postmodern, but he, she gave, uh, well, to, for example, to the lines that have not to be always a strike that can, with, with a lot of force, but some sense, some sense, some sense. The, which sense? Well, with the lines you can follow, uh, you can in, indicate to the people where the traffic should go. Um, here is very clear. No? You have to travel. Uh, all the all the people have to walk in this way. You can see not just the 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 lines, but also the light that shows you where you have to go. Uh, and this is very important when you manage a lot of people. You know? This is the same museum, and you can see also here the same idea. No? With the lines, you will know where you have to go. Yeah, it's very interesting, uh, this idea. I think so. Uh, what, uh, this is another uh, building in Italy also, in Calabria, that the same architect and with the same idea. No? We can use uh, new concepts to do to, to good things. No? So, what we see here, what we see here, uh, probably sometimes to break the rule could be a good idea if we have a good aim, a better aim, a better aim, uh, obviously if you don't destroy uh, but uh, good things, no? if you destroy bad things could be a good thing. But not, uh, so for, for she is clear, it's very clear that uh, art is not just to break the rules. This is not art. Is the art is, is to break rules because you don't destroy a good thing, but you 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 improve. You have some aim for something. And I think that this happened in the law with the feminist movement. Uh, so uh, with the ba or battles for freedom, for pursuit of happiness. And at the very beginning, at the very beginning, well, uh, yeah, there was, there were a lot of not so good laws uh, should be breaked <laughs> uh, nowadays also. No? Uh, and that's why at the very beginning, the feminists fought, uh, well, tried to find uh, some kind of right. Which kind of right? Well, the, the first uh, wave of feminism was about the suffrage, you know, the right to suffrage, the woman suffrage. So now we can see that there could be so many movements 
in the field of feminism, the first one, the first web that is called the first web is the what's at, at the end of the 19th centuries and was until the after the Second World War. And uh, what kind of things they they are, were trying to to find you know, the, the women's suffrage right, property right, and political candidacy right, civil and political rights more or less. We, could, we can talk about this, no? Civil and political right. Then, then, then was a second wave of feminism in between the 60s and the 80s, um, which were the aims of that wave, no? If it's aimed to the reduce inequalities in sex, no? Family, then there were so many problems. No, maybe in workplace, no, not so many women have a, a the opportunity to work in so many places. No, their reproductive rights. There is a, here we can find the fierce division between the feminism, no? the fierce great division, because for some of them. Uh, just a little portion at the, at the very beginning, uh, they said, well, abortion is a right, you can kill uh, your baby because he's not a baby, it's just a part of yourself, no? Uh, the problem there is, when is the baby, no? Second week, three, third week, third month, some, some of them would say, no, yeah, when you get birth, and then you can call baby uh, uh, before the birth it's just a uh, uh, cells and your your body and you can do it with your body whatever you want no? it's a problem of time uh, and finally some official legal inequalities the third wave at the end of the uh, the last century well, there was an explosion of new rights in feminism, embracing individualism and diversity, diversity. And finally, the last wave, the fourth wave that we have now is combating sexual harassment, assault and misogyny. So, but it is important to, to realize that the the, all the philosophers that think in the, a critical way, in a critical way, that just critiques of the others, it is very, very interesting, uh, are mixed with feminists, well, not all of them, but most of them, uh, in this, this a, a, a part of the history of feminism. So, uh, Critical theories, critical authors are very critique. And um, also, that's why uh, uh, some from time to time are not so well received <laughs> in, in the debate in the Congress. I remember so many Congress of Philosophy of Law in Switzerland, in Argentina, in so many places in Spain. And, from t a, there used to be three divisions, you no know? positivism, a, use naturalism, and, and critical theories, you no know? and authors of the each is one uh, more or less between positivism and use, use naturalism. There could be a dialogue, a debate, and well, and it's good because both of them are trying to build as as uh, much as they can their knowledge and trying to hear the other but the critical authors uh, are just saying no I will critique you as much as I can and there is no stable true uh, uh, if you say this, the contrary I will critique you also again 
it's not so easy to 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 talk with that kind of of authors. So, in any case, in any case, feminist is not a part of the critical uh, theories that is well mixed in this in the third way. Uh, and this is a part of the feminist, and another part is that it has to be with women's suffrage and all these kind of things nowadays. No, the very beginning, uh, well, the, there was a distinction you know, between well, the feminists that only promote the, the woman and the feminists that promote the woman, a man, not woman, not man, mix of them. A mix of mix of mix of them. There is a first division, no? and then, well, the movement with this critical approach, you can go. Nobody knows where, no, a, because you can critique also this movement, both of them, no, saying, well, and why just women and men and mix of them. Well, we have to, well, obviously, as I told you, abortion uh, is a, the, another division of the feminism. That, uh, they say, well, we, we can promote also the prostitution of the people. No? Why not? If it is a matter uh, of, well, it's just a role. It's, we have to change our, uh, our ideas to break the rules. Uh, why, why, why prostitution is bad? Well, it's so natural, it's so natural. And, and, and then we have so many other things, no? so many other movements, no? new divisions. No? Nowadays, we can find well, this. No? Well, if uh, you can do, you can have sex also with persons and not persons, robots, for example, or pets. Or kids? Why? Why? If, if the sexuality is so natural, kid have a, we avoid the sexuality to the kid. Well, why we cannot have sex between adults and kids? It's, it's very natural, no? Why? You, we have to change our preconceptions of the antique society that nobody knows why that there is not true at the end of the day. No. Uh, uh, another thing that we can it's right nowadays they're, they're, all these things are in the debate now, now and people trying to support these kind of ideas no uh, and why between men and women or men and men and women and women we can put uh, so many people no uh, making sex with each other uh, all women all men and not just two and not just a family well, why not in between the family uh, and finally, there, there is uh, uh, two, two, two divisions of, of the feminism, no? ones that believes that we have to reinforce the, and to, to realize what, what is woman and to distinguish and to promote the, the individualities of women and another movement, a part of the movement that is uh, that is going the liberal feminists that that fights especially for the equalities, no? And if and how to be equal, how to be equal, no? Well, to to say that there should be no distinction, no? As Simone de Beauvoir said, uh, well, you never uh, you're born as a woman. The society makes you woman, no? Uh, it's just a role. I have nothing to do with the truth. truth there, there is no truth at the end of the day. That's why uh, this kind of feminism that you have uh, on your right is so different than the, the the traditional feminism and the, the that this kind of feminism could be very well related and get uh, so many adepts to so many followers between. The, the critical movement, you know? this is b b b b more or less like a consequence. Uh, well, I don't know what you think about uh, this. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have to promote the equalities 
or the difference of the woman. Yeah, or, well, they say that there is no woman, and each individual is each individual and have nothing to do with uh, a mystical identity of the community. Yeah. Um, we can give all the roles to the woman and the and to the and to the men, the equal and absolute equality is possible or not. Yes, that's name. Um so what I think that okay, I think that we have to start from a place of changing our mentality about everything and rethinking things. It's actually very similar to um, Derrida. And so once we do this, we then stop seeing certain roles as soon I can't hear you, sorry. The last part, I... The, the first part I, I have heard, uh, yeah, by the way, the idea of getting away of presumptions is not only on the reader, it's also in Husserl, in the phenomenology. It is very important, no? In the phenomenology, you can find the same idea. But the phenomenology accepts that you can understand the reality, no? Natalie. Don't you want to say something? I, I have a clarification. Uh -huh. uh, when you were talking about the differences in the brands of feminism we have, you mentioned something about um, sexuality and it being more open. I don't know if I'm the one who misheard, but did you mention like um, pets and I don't know, robots? And I was just wondering if that is what you mentioned, which, um, which brand? Which group of feminists is uh, oh, nowadays, uh, the is talking about this? Obviously, the, the, the books uh, only say a little about this. Um, but uh, in the radical branch, in the, there are some people uh, that are putting... Oh, nowadays, it's a mix of things and a mix of people. And uh, I don't know if we can call truly all these kind of things, feminism. Why? Yeah, that, that's yeah, that, that, feminism. Yeah, because uh, they are promoting not only women, but also men, and also so many things. <laughs> uh, uh, obviously, uh, well, but obviously, obviously, there are so many things, and used to be together, um, uh, or by violence. I, I know so many countries where the institution to fight to uh, is not about, not about women now, nowadays, it's about gender. Yeah, it's not about uh, well, the position of the, uh, of, of the reality, it's about which, what, who, or what kind of thing you can make sex sex yeah this well but in so many places you can find institutions that promote all these kind of things all these kind of things one more one less if you can do in your private room whatever you want so this is the idea that i behind are behind this kind of movement yeah okay but i just like to say that um mainstream feminism wouldn't advocate for such, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we have to continue with this. I think that uh, we can have equalities in all things, except obviously in maternity. In maternity, the men cannot uh, replace uh, things, no? And, all th and it's good to have a uh, some kind of uh, equali uh, equalities of opportunities and, and to, uh, to help the inequalities, but in taking care of the specificity of each person. No? We have in common only the nature, no? 
the nature, the human nature, but each person has his own way of being. Uh, his own identity that is something that is loose in the postmodernist uh, era. So, the final, I, I think that we need not much time, but now we have to say just a little about African philosophy. And I will put a challenge, and a, and a challenge now. Uh, that, and I, I realize that we have not so much time. What do you think? We can talk about African jurisprudence or not? Uh, I, I gave you two readings that you will realize what uh, thinking about that, that authors about this, this topic now. The first challenge for you is this question. Does it make any sense to talk about women mathematics, women maths? male chemistry, white trigonometry, or African jurisprudence? <laughs> it, it makes sense or not? Second question, can we talk about colonization? A very famous word. And decolonization of ideas, no? Remember, <laughs> uh, which one is uh, the author of these ideas? Who was? Well, so many authors of the Western culture. It's not that idea of colonization, a Western idea, an European white author's idea. Final question. Would it be a good idea to develop or mine against someone? Remember, so many authors uh, did that, you no? Know? Dorking again hard. Hard, uh, well, against the the formalist positivism that uh, was in the past. Austin against a uh, natural law. Um, well, I'm not, not so many, so many authors, or or or, or the famous one, uh, uh, Marx against capitalism. He thinks that all the the law is capitalism. Obviously, uh, is, Marx is not a good historical uh, author. <laughs> uh, well, yes, have not so much notion of history because capitalism appears in not in what part of the humanity history. Uh, but at the very beginning, there was no capitalism, uh, and there was law. Uh, he makes capitalism with law. Uh, it is a good idea to, to make that. Uh, well, I don't know. You have the uh, Sally. Don't you want to say something about this? About this? Well, since you said it is a task, I wanted to ask you, like, for the first question, uh, the categories you have given. Is it? I know. Are. Uh, are they just categories to identify that there are different provinces of jurisprudence, or do you want us to actually look into women mathematics? Are these just examples to ask now whether there are various provinces of jurisprudence? Am I clear? My question. Well, uh, I prefer to. Uh, some of you want to answer, but. Then. I put these questions only to realize what kind of jurisprudence, if there could be, first, if there could be any kind of jurisprudence. It's just for an, an, ex, an example. Okay, Elaine. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, so you said you wanted us to attempt to answer the questions that you put in the screen. Yeah. Um, so I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. So I read the article by Murungi, um, John yeah. Murungi, and he actually touches on the first question. So exactly. That, so but what do you think about? What do you think about? There could be. It makes sense to talk about women in mathematics or not? Male no, chemistry. It, it makes sense to talk about African jurisprudence. 
it's just the, the final one, uh, you can say yes. And the yes. other, no. And in which yes. sense? In which okay, sense? So because all of them are science. All of them are science, or not? Yes, they are. But uh, there's and, a, is a okay. historical context that makes it slightly more important to give certain categories. So for example, African jurisprudence, there is so much that is African that might not be represented in other forms of jurisprudence. So no. it's important to analyze it from the point of view of the African customs or cultures, for example. So you have to take those into account as you form a jurisprudence. It doesn't have to be all based on the culture, but you have to take them into consideration as you form the broader jurisprudence. Okay. Abdi Adnan, don't you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to say something. Uh, okay, so the, regarding the first question, uh, I, it doesn't even make sense to um, put African jurisprudence up there with women mathematics and male chemistry because mm -hmm. uh, mathematics, um, like, okay, it's different from jurisprudence because there's no context, like the way Elaine was just saying right now, uh, there's no um, need to look at the historical context or anything because math is math. So it doesn't, make, it doesn't make sense to talk about women mathematics or white trigonometry or uh, male chemistry, but it makes sense to talk about African jurisprudence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I just wanted to comment on um, the reading we, d we did for um, African jurisprudence. Um, the, 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 the author talks about um, how, is, how uh, Islamic jurisprudence is uh, incompatible with African jurisprudence because that means you have to reject um, African jurisprudence in its entirety. So, okay, I didn't agree with that. I just wanted to hear your, your thoughts. Yeah, well, uh, we have not so much time now, but I, I will say the, my conclusions about this. Uh, I think that we can, we can talk about one mathematics, we can talk about male chemistry, what, or, or yellow, or whatever, you want trigonometry and African jurisprudence. In which way? In which way? In three ways. Three ways. First, we can say that, for example, uh, some of you would say, well, one answer I found in your, your intervention. Yeah? First, uh, for example, there is uh, the history of all science, no? History of of mathematics, uh, we can see uh, well, how many women uh, were in the past, in this last century, and now in this field. Well, this is uh, women mathematics, yeah. Uh, or male chemistry, the same, the same, this is the contrary, you know? Uh, so, in the first uh, connection with African jurisprudence, we, we, we search which authors are from Africa? Now, probably uh, the, this is the, the, the people connection. No? Which uh, of the thinkers of the authors are African? And you, we can call that African jurisprudence. Second, not the person, but the territory. No? There are so many authors like Finnis. Uh, uh, was living in Africa and there and there in Af Africa uh, he developed all his theory. We can think that probably it could we can call that jurisprudence African jurisprudence because it was developed by Africans in Africa and also by foreign people in Africa. Second uh, possibility and we can talk the same well uh, not, not the same with white trigonometry or it's not a matter of geography what we can say well also a uh, African trigonometry is, I think that or African mathematics or African chemistry it's also possible because all of them are, are science and the third thing that you mentioned uh, that is well, for uh, it's taking care taking care of the the African jurisprudence could be focused in the problems of Africa, the specific problems of Africa, and there uh, we can say that is African jurisprudence. But this jurisprudence could be made, uh, could be uh, did by anyone in the world, by uh, an American author, 
that is taking care of the problem of Africa. We can we should call that African jurisprudence, made by the American author. No? And finally, a fourth one a relation we can call uh, the uh, the way of understanding of jurisprudence in Africa. That is not the teacher but the student. No? We have to take care of not the authors but but the people that take care of that. Well, now I, I have not some, some, I just have a minute. I want to, we can discuss discuss this later uh, in our meeting. But uh, I think that it, it is not a good idea to talk about colonization or decolonization. It's more or less, uh, it's an idea that is very present in South America not only your country, in, in many countries in, in, in the world. Um, that says, no, Spaniards uh, colonized us and we have to take, you know, no, but probably the ideas, one thing is the political thing. Colonization is a political concept. But when you are thinking, you have to develop you, you, you think. You cannot say that all the people in America were stupid, ignorant. Uh, uh, the the Western culture imposed all the ideas. No, they were not stupid. They realized that there were good ideas. One example: uh, uh, at the very beginning of the before the colonization, the people of South America didn't have the will, the will, <laughs> the will. So they discovered the will with the Spaniards. And they realize, oh, it's a good thing. It will help us so much uh, in transportation of things. Uh, so this is a good idea. The ideas, the ideas, uh, how to be the colonial state. Well, try to to understand. Just yes, not to accept the idea, but understand what could be the uh, the truth in each case. Uh, how to be the colonial state. Well. Uh, try to discover in all the, these authors first. Study the authors. Study people, any people, any people. No, study and try to get the truth from them. You you will discover so many things. You will enrich the the concept. This is the way of the colonization. Yeah, and 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 this is not just the last question. It's not no. It is said by someone that this. Uh, in this circumstance of this race or this, no, I will deny that. No, or I will be against the, the Western culture, or I will be against the South culture. No, it's not a good thing that this is. Uh, I will finish with this. Uh, I will. Uh, well, this is my, my conclusion. Not don't never do any kind of slave jurisprudence. No. They're full person, a couple of the greatest things. Yeah, it's a good to think, not just to have fresh understanding, no, try to, to think the best things that we can do with our knowledge, with our activity. Think big, feel big, love big. I think that this, this last, last word, love, is very forgotten by all these authors, they, and not by, by another, no. Uh, next week, uh, I will try to begin with a complete theory of law, at least the first quest of this theory. Uh, I hope that you, my students, should overcome me. Uh,